Now, okay, so I published on those things. Um, I have not published on autism causation, although I've given a number of talks on this. And so that's my next uh, discussion is autism and uh, it's causation by both EMFs and chemicals and how they work. Um, and so uh, this is a figure here of how I think autism works. And, uh, and I'm not gonna talk about everything in this figure, but the, the basic process I believe is the following, that we have both EMFs and various chemicals can act to increase intracellular calcium. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how the chemicals work later on. And that the excessive intracellular calcium in the brain, in the developing brain of, of both in, uh, in utero and also shortly after birth, uh, there is a tremendous amount of synaptic formation in the developing brain in humans and in animals uh, at that stage in development. So both uh, late, uh, late in, in gestation, the last three months, and also in, uh, in, uh, in the uh, early life of the child. Um, there are five different mechanisms that control the formation of the synapses in the developing brain. So, so you know, everything in the brain is, the, is dependent on, you know, on the, on the proper formation of synapses between certain neurons and other neurons that they're supposed to respond to. And, uh, um, and, and so there are five mechanisms that are involved in the, in the formation of those synapses. They include the dendritic outgrowth of the neurons. They include synapse formation, synapse maturation, synapse elimination, and also something called MCP2 function, which I won't try to explain to you. Uh, all of these things involve, are, are known to be regulated by intracellular calcium. And therefore, when you have excessive intracellular calcium produced either through EMFs or through various chemicals, you will change this synapse formation. And let me just say, in autism, it's known that the connectivity of different parts of the brain, which is, which is, is impacted in autism, uh, some things you get more, more connections. In other cases, you get and in most other cases, you get, uh, you get less connections, less synaptic connections. So we know that, we know that the brain function is impacted by uh, changes in synapse formation. And we know that the, uh, these processes are very active, as I said earlier, in the developing brain and that they are all regulated by intracellular calcium, okay? Okay, so we've already talked about how uh, how EMFs do this. Uh, I want to say, I, I'll talk about uh, the, how chemicals act as well. And uh, now, in addition to the usual sort of garden variety um, um, types of uh, autism that we see, uh, there are also what are called syndromic forms of autism. And these are caused by uh, germline mutations that affect the synapses. And sometimes they affect them directly and sometimes they affect them indirectly, but they, they all affect the synapses. And, but the different synapses in different parts of the brain are different from one another. So they're not all equally affected. And so when you see these genetically caused uh, syndromic forms, they're not identical in their features to the, uh, the more common types of autism. Uh, and those things are caused, uh, but you know, but the point is that um, EMFs may also, through the action of free radicals uh, attacking the DNA, and I'll talk about that later on, uh, they may have roles in, in producing these germline mutations in addition to 
roles on the uh, on the uh, sorry uh, <clears throat> on the on the these uh, processes that reg that directly regulate the synapse formation in the developing brain. Okay, so that's uh, now there is clear evidence that um, <clears throat> that excessive VGCC activity can cause autism. Uh, the situation, and, and this is genetic evidence, uh, there's a mutation uh, in uh, one of these VGCCs. I'm not going to try to explain this nomenclature to you, uh, but it uh, that causes what's called Timothy syndrome. Where uh, where the where the channels when they open are very slow uh, very slow in closing, and uh, so you get much higher uh, increases in intracellular calcium as a consequence of that. Um, there are also a number of others. Uh, there's another. Uh, there are mutations in a different subunit of uh, the BGCCs that uh, can also cause a slowing of the channel. Uh, there's another one of these VGCCs, it has, has very low expression in the brain, but nevertheless, uh, when you get, you know, very slow closing of it, it causes symptoms of autism rather than full-fledged autism. And then there's another channel here, which indirectly affects these calcium channels. And, uh, and it also can uh, have roles in, in causing autism. All of these are genetic studies that clearly demonstrate causation. And uh, <clears throat> let me say, there's also, uh, there, there are also uh, genetic polymorphism studies where uh, more modest increases in activity can cause uh, increased susceptibility to, uh, to autism as well. So the genetics clearly shows that, that the, uh, the VGCCs can have roles in causing autism in this way. Now, how do the chemicals work? And I'm, I'm sure you know quite a number of you are probably interested in chemicals uh, actions in the body. And uh, these are these are chemicals that were involved in multiple chemical sensitivity, but they also have roles in lots of other things. And they all act by increasing the activity of the what are called NMDA receptors. And when those are activated, you also get increases in intracellular calcium here. So each of these pathways, and there, some of them have uh, like the mercury and hydrogen sulfide act along two different pathways. Uh, the, uh, um, the organochlorines, the uh, organophosphorus and carbamate pesticides, uh, they all act uh, uh, to produce uh, increases in, in intracellular calcium and consequently nitric oxide as well. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, um, now it's my opinion that the EMFs are the primary driver of the autism epidemic, okay? And that, um, that may seem surprising to you. There have been more studies done on chemical action than, than on EMF action. Uh, but that's, that just means they haven't been studied very much. But, um, but the reason that it's my opinion that uh, is, is that um, the organic solvents, the organic chlorine pesticides, the organophosphorus and carbamate pesticides, these, all of these compounds here, um, their synthesis uh, went up, uh, there were huge increases in the production of these things during the 30 years following World War II. But that was really before the, the and so, so there were plenty of these things uh, out there uh, back in, uh, you know, 1975. But that was really before the, the autism epidemic really got going. So um, I, I, that's not to say that these don't have any role in, in causing autism, but I don't think they're the primary driver of the epidemic. I think the primary driver of the epidemic are the, are the EMFs and that, uh, but they may act synergistically with these 
and we already talked about other synergisms with uh, with uh, chemicals. So, um, um, you know that that's not absolute proof, but I think that's uh, that's my reasoning for uh, thinking that the that the EMFs are probably the main drivers of the epidemic. It, it really has to do with the timing of the. Uh, of, 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 of the autism epidemic with this huge increase in EMFs that we've been seeing over the last uh, 20, 25 years uh, in our environment. And uh, so that's, uh, um, no. So anyway, so basically what, what I think is happening is that the chemicals act on this pathway, the, uh, the EMFs act in this pathway. They both act through intracellular calcium. They both can act to uh, uh, impact the synaptic formation in the developing brain. Um, and uh, <clears throat> these things here uh, are, are things that were discussed in the, the introduction of my talk. And I'm not really going to discuss them, but I think they're important for understanding uh, what goes on, particularly in autism, in 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 older children and and in in adults, uh, why it stays around so long, and uh, and keeps impacting. Uh, there are ways, I believe, to to uh, get improvements in autism, and there are a number of other people who believe that as well. Uh, so uh, I don't think it's hopeless, but I think that that uh, we have a good understanding of, of what the primary mechanism is likely to be here. And, uh, and so, you know, obviously, you know, one of the uh, issues is obvious, and that is that, um, you know, our, our, our latest figures on autism incidence is, uh, is about one in 34 births. But those are all, you know, th th those are all eight or nine or 10 years old, you know, those are things that, you know, that involve births that occurred uh, <clears throat> perhaps a decade ago. Um, and so the, 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 the levels of uh, babies being born this year may be vastly higher than that already uh, based on all the increases in EMF exposures we have. Um, and uh, okay, so, um, there is reason to think that ADHD is also produced by EMF exposure, and this is based on both uh, uh, animal studies and on human epidemiology. Um, uh, and, and, and there's there's one other thing I want to talk about in, in this context, and that is um, something that was uh, discussed earlier by Dr. Boyd Haley. Um, Autism is much more common in male babies than in female babies. Um, when you study syndromic autism, which is, is caused by specific mutations, you can study it in families where it's passed, where they, the mutation is passed on to both male babies and female babies in the same family. And what you find is that the uh, autism uh, is produced uh, um, very commonly in male babies, but not in female babies, or or in the female babies, if it is produced, it's much more much milder. So um, males are more sensitive to developing autism for whatever reason. Um, and uh, Haley has suggested that male dysfunction, which is a very important thing in young males in our society. Uh, may be produced by a similar but milder mechanism than what, what is causing autism. Uh, and uh, if that's true, and we have male dysfunction fairly commonly in males in their teens and 20s who were born, obviously, <laughs> years ago, uh, when we had much lower EMFs. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and so if this is true, um, what it means is that male dysfunction will inevitably be getting much, much worse based on the exposures we've already had. 
as young males uh, develop over time. Uh, and uh, so, so, so this is, so you can see there, there are all kinds of problems that are where there, there are, are highly plausible mechanisms that are generated. And these kinds of things can, can generate massive uh, impacts. I mean, just one autism child impacts an entire family. And, uh, you know, so, so this is another, uh, another uh, plausible uh, existential threat, I think, to our, uh, to our survival.